Fucking gas, lads. Fucking gas. I recorded what will be yesterday's episode about fannying around, or at least in part about fannying around, okay? And immediately afterwards, as soon as I had finished the recording, I rewound it to the start, flicked on the kettle, and hit play. Because I always listen, not always, but for the most part, I listen back to my to what I've just recorded before I upload it, if I have the luxury of time and headspace and all the rest of it. If for no other reason to be able to write the blurb about it, because I'd often finish recording an episode and then go to write the bur- blurb and go, the fuck was I talking about for 20 minutes? I might have a clue. Or I might, odds are I remember the last thing I was talking about, but given the nature of these fucking monologues, like fucking hell, I could start talking about toenails and end up talking about microscopes. And, you know, in between, I could be talking about the International Space Station. So it's it's useful for me to go back, listen to it and take the odd note and then actually write the blurb. But anyway, I flicked on the kettle. It was making myself a cup of boiling water. I, I off tea and coffee for the most part. More about that now in a minute when I talk about weight. But flicked on the kettle and I was listening to it heard myself talk about fannying around and I'm kind of smiling and nodding to my own advice which is kind of weird it's funny like I'll, I'll hear myself having just said something in a recording and I'll go oh yeah 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 I know what you mean to myself obviously so I'm listening to myself and talking to myself simultaneously which is just I don't know a bit weird I've said it before I'll say it again I'm weird for doing this you're weird for listening but anyway I was listening back to it and when it finished I found myself just about to click on the picture, basically, that accompanies this episode. And it's a YouTube clip entitled, Tattoo Artists React to Athlete Tattoos. And on one side of the picture, the thumbnail for the video, it's McGregor with his shirt off and his big chest tattoo. The other picture is um, of Mike Tyson in a suit, but of course he has a big facial tattoo. And then two other people who are presumably tattoo artists. And I was just about to fucking click on this link when I kind of caught myself. And I t- again, past guest and friend of the show, Paul Riley put me onto this one. He asked me, or didn't ask me, but he said that he'd been asking himself why all the time. But in the moment. Not why didn't he study harder in school or why doesn't he start fucking triathlons or whatever it is that's in his head. Why are you doing what you're doing or what you're about to do in this very moment? So the perfect example of that is the fridge. You open the fridge and you ask yourself, why am I opening the fridge? And then you get to answer yourself. And maybe the answer is because you're bored. Or maybe it's because you haven't eaten all day and you're fucking starving. But the idea is that no matter what you're doing, if you just catch yourself and say, why? Because very often we do things whether we're fannying around or not, that aren't in our best interest. Whether that's eating chocolate or smoking or whatever the fuck it is. But we do it, in, not instinctively, but we do it habitually. It becomes part of our life. They're, and they're the worst things. The, the bad things that we do, that we do habitually. So something that you do habitually is just something that you do out of habit. And it's typically something you do all the fucking time. And like incremental steps are the way to improvement, they're also the way to disimprovement. So you ruin your life quite nicely if you do it bit by bit. Okay, and the opposite is true. You will make your life immeasurably better step by step. But anyway, I caught myself about to click on this um, video. And it's funny because when I recall it, I was listening to the podcast and then I went to click on this video. But it's funny though, because I skipped the bit when I went in and opened the YouTube app. My memory wasn't of listening to the recording, opening up YouTube, and then nearly pressing on that video. My memory is listening to the recording and nearly pressing on the video, which means that my clicking into YouTube was habitual. It's just, I'm doing it out of habit. And only for uh, Podge's advice on asking myself why, I was just about to click on it and then I said, why am I clicking on this? I don't n- need to know, nor do I give a flying fiddler's fuck what tattoo artists think of other people's tattoos. Who gives a shit? What benefit, what value is, would be in that video for me other than, you know, a passing <laughs> And you might wonder, what harm? Well, I'll tell you what the harm is. You do that half a dozen times a day and there's two hours of your life you'll never get back. But anyway, 
So I was saying that I'd get back to why I was boiling up the kettle for a cup of boiling hot water. I gave up sugar in my coffee, I think it was at the start of October. Actually, on a, an episode just yesterday, the day before, I said I've sorted out my diet since the start of October. I think I could be doing it since the start of September. But anyway, since at the very least the start of October, I cut out sugar in my coffee. Always, forever. I've been drinking fucking five or six cups of coffee a day for fucking 10 plus years, 15 years probably. And I'd always have a spoonful of sugar in there. And what I found was, I would have had it in my head say that the reason I drank so much coffee was because I was addicted to it. Now look, being addicted to coffee isn't the worst fucking vice in the world, so I just let myself away with it. But what I noticed when I stopped putting the sugar in it, I stopped enjoying it as much, number one, but I thought, you know, after a week or two weeks of drinking it without the sugar, it'd be grand, and I could always have a bit of sugar as a treat every so often. But anyway, what I noticed was my coffee intake plummeted, which made me wonder, was I addicted to the coffee or was I addicted to the sugar? Now, as I've said before, increasingly these days, when I met, is it one thing or another, I typically end up saying it's a bit of both. But I, I, never, I would have never conceptualized that I was addicted to sugar and that's why I drank six cups of coffee a day. Because it was, you know, the spoonful of sugar, the heaped teaspoon of sugar melted into the water and you get that syrupy, sweet kick. But anyway, stop putting sugar in my coffee and by default just ended up drinking coffee a lot less. Now I'm limiting myself to three times a day and that's a maximum. So it's breakfast, so it's basically as soon as I get up I'll have a coffee. I'll have a coffee at lunch and I might have a coffee in between, but that's my limit. I'm not having any more than that. I'm not drinking coffee later in the day. Now, I'm not being a fucking Hitler about it. If I'm in a friend's house and they offer me coffee at five o'clock in the evening, I'm going to fucking have one with them if I want one. I'm not going to go, oh no, I've hit my limit for the day. But more often than not, I've set that limit to myself and it, it's working. Now, the reason that I'm just drinking boiling water is A, I have to up my hydration massively. For the amount that I'm working out, I need to be drinking between three and a half and four litres of water a day. Try it genuinely lads try and eat, drink three and a half or four liters of water a day it's fucking hard so if i can get in a couple of hot cups of water every day to replace cups of coffee that's just an extra way of, of adding some hydra my hydration why am i talking about hydration i want to talk about weighing um myself because i've spoken a lot about exercise and nutrition in a roundabout way. I know this isn't an exercise and nutrition podcast by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it. I suppose it, this is only just speaking out loud or talking off the top of my head. This podcast and the content in it reflects me quite well, I think, because I talk about pretty much everything. And that's that's me. That, that That's the type of life that I, I've either been blessed with or... Um, blessed with or cursed with, I, d I don't know, pick one, but it's the life that I have, I'm into a million and one different things, and that seems to kind of play itself out in the podcast. But in relation to kind of diet and exercise, which I've spoken a small bit about, I want to concentrate on weighing yourself, specifically weighing yourself. Never fucking ceases to amaze me how few people understand this. And I've said it to many people who've tried to lose weight, I've said this to people who've been trying to lose weight their entire lives and I just cannot get this across to them. And the failing is certainly in part on, on their end. In part. Okay? There's a bit of cognitive dissonance going on there. They don't want to know what I'm trying to tell them on maybe an unconscious level and that's why they're not getting it. Because what I'm saying makes perfect sense as far as I'm concerned. And I think that I have a good ability in explaining things to people. But in relation to teaching people how to weigh themselves, I failed miserably and have done reliably and repeatedly for years. So if any is have a better way for me to explain what I'm about to explain to you, I'm all fucking ears. I'm off the lead at gmail.com or any of the social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, whatever else. Okay, let me know what you think. But the thing about weighing yourself is... I don't know what weight I am at the minute. Okay, now I fucking should, but I don't. Now I have a digital scales in the bathroom there. And I could walk down now and weigh myself. But that would only tell me what I weigh in this moment. It won't tell me what my weight is. 
Okay, so depending on how hydrated or dehydrated or fed or hungry I am or what I'm wearing, there's a big difference between shorts and a t-shirt and steel toe boots, snickers, trousers with fucking screws and tools and shit hanging off them, a t-shirt, a hoodie and a big fucking coat. Like there's, you're, there's kilos of difference there. Okay, so now you might say, well, wear yourself naked. That's what you absolutely should do. But there's a couple of things you need to do as well. Okay, so the first thing is you have to average your weight. So you need to weigh yourself, let's say, on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Sunday. Okay, so pick three days during the week or, yeah, pick three days, okay, within a week or so. But as well as that, you need to weigh yourself first thing in the morning after you've gone to the toilet, before you've drank anything and after you go to the toilet. Okay, so you want to be weighing yourself as light as possible. So wake up, get naked if you're not already naked, go to the toilet, push out as much of a poo as you can even if you don't need to, and push out as much of a wee as you can even if you don't need to. Weigh yourself. And do that three times within the week. And not, you know, fucking Monday morning, Monday lunchtime, and, lunch, and Monday evening. Try Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday. Okay? As soon as you've gotten up, after you've gone to the toilet and before you've eaten or drank anything. Add those weights up, divide it by three, that's your weight. Okay? Another crucially important thing you need to do is calibrate your scales. Okay? Don't be thinking that when you stand on your scales and it says you're 80 kilos or 90 kilos or whatever it is, don't think that that's accurate because the odds of it being accurate are fucking non-existent. What you need is you need to calibrate it every single goddamn time you use it. You need to get a 10 kilo weight or a 5 kilo weight or a weight, a known weight. It can weigh 6.254 kilos for all I care. But you need to have an exact weight, okay? A dumbbell or a disc for weightlifting or fucking two bags of sugar if you don't have anything else, okay? Rule of thumb, a litre of water weighs, about, weighs a kilo. So if you don't have weights, get two two litre jugs of milk out of the fridge. There's your four key, four kilos. Okay, put your known weight, whatever it is, on your scales. If you put a five kg weight on your scales and up pops 5.00 kilos, happy fucking days, your scale is accurate. The odds of that happening are practically non-existent, lads. What you'll find is it'll be 5.2 or 4.8, or some variant of it. Now what you have to do there is, you have to move your scales on the ground until it weighs what it's supposed to weigh. Okay, now if you move it a mil one way or a mil the other way, that could be all the difference. That might uh, be what it needs to be. You need to be on tiles or concrete lads, ideally. Wooden floors are problematic with this because as you stand on them, like if you lean over to one side, your weight might go up. You lean over to one side, other side, your weight might need to go down. So ideally you need to be on either tiles or concrete and as flat a surface as is humanly possible, okay? Any kind of a, an incline or a, a wobble, like a wobbly table at a restaurant, any kind of a wobble like that, fucking useless absolutely no good and again if i haven't said it i'll repeat if i haven't said it i'll say it now or repeat it you have to do this every single goddamn time you weigh yourself okay i was chatting to a guy recently who actually runs a gym believe it or not and in the gym they have a digital scales and it's been there for 10 years and i was trying to explain the whole idea of calibrating your scales to him and uh, averaging your weight over time to him and he said that his scales is calibrated I was like, okay, when was it calibrated? I was like, oh, we put a we put a 20k disc on it. We know that the scales is out by a kilo is actually what he told me. And I was like, oh God, a real fucking head scratch. I was like, what do you mean you know your scales is out by a kilo? And he actually told me that they put a 20 kilo weight on it and it weighed 21 kilos. So he thought that his scales was out by a kilo. But what he doesn't realise or didn't realise is that his scales isn't out by a kilo. His scales wherever it was placed, was out by a kilo in 20 kilos. So his scales is on the floor. You put a 20 kg weight on it, it weighs 21 kilos. But if he put two 20 kilo weights on it, it'd be 42 kilos. So let's say he thinks he weighs 90 kilos. 
but he says the scale says he weighs 91 but he knows it's out a kilo as he says so he only weighs 90 what's really happening there is there's how many four how many how many 20s is in 90? Four and a half. There's four and a half 20 kilos in 90. So if you multiply 20 kilos by four and a half, you get 90. Okay? So there's four and a half kilos out in his body weight because there's the equivalent of four of these discs. Each are out by a kilo. So if his scales is telling him he weighs 91 kilos, he really weighs 95 kilos. Now you might think, what harm? If your scales is off, or it's not working properly it's off it's going to be off the same all the time it's not if it's bolted to the floor and never moves there's half a chance that even if it's wrong or perfect it'll stay the same amount wrong or stay perfect indefinitely but the point remains unless you've got something that's bolted to the ground what weight it tells you you are will depend on even a mill in fucking any direction. So it is crucially important if you're interested in knowing what you weigh to calibrate it every time that you use it. Okay, so when you put your 10 kg weight on it, it has to say 10 kg on it before you weigh yourself. And of course, you have to do it first thing in the morning after you've gone to the toilet and before you've eaten anything. But Frano, I've been weighing myself for years. I've been trying to lose weight and I've been weighing myself once a week or once a month my entire life. I couldn't have been doing it wrong all that time. I know loads of people. I've been to Weight Watchers. I've been to this, that and the other. And nobody does the things you're talking about, Frano. Fuck all of them. They don't know what they're talking about. Ask any jockey. Ask any fighter. What have jockeys and fighters got to do with anything? I'll tell you what they've got to do with it. Them weighing a certain amount is part of their occupation. They don't get paid if they don't weigh a certain amount or at least below a certain amount. So if anybody knows anything about weight, it's fighters and jockeys. I'm not a jockey, so I don't know anything about it. But my understanding is that weight is, is crucial. But anyway, did you ever meet a fucking jockey? They're generally not the tallest people in the world. And if you ever do see one, now I wouldn't recommend you do this because jockeys tend to be temperamental little pricks. But try and pinch one. Okay, trying to pinch a jockey is like trying to pinch a wall. There's just there's just nothing there. You just can't get it because they're fucking skin and bone because they have to have their weight down. Why? I'm not entirely sure. Aside from being lighter on the horse, something to do with handicaps. Maybe somebody who knows anything about horse racing might fucking enlighten me. But anyway, if you're weighing yourself for whatever reason, maybe you're looking to put on mass or build strength or fit into fucking something, whatever it is, weigh yourself over the course of a week to get your weight. Calibrate your fucking scales every single time you use it. And I'll chat you tomorrow. But before I let you go, I'd just like to remind everybody that this episode and all the episodes on YouTube have been brought to you by past guest and friend of the show, Pat McKeown. Pat is very similar to myself insofar as that he's long had an interest in the mind and more specifically the brain and how they both interact to such an extent that he went and spent four years getting a degree in neuroscience and then spent a further year in getting a master's in psychology. Now what he's done is pretty fucking cool. He's after setting up his own YouTube channel. It's called Pat Psychology Masters and there's a link in the description. Now what he's done here is he's uploaded all the best bits that he's learned over the last five years and put them into short, plain English, easy to understand YouTube videos for the likes of myself. His YouTube channel has been a massive resource for me in understanding both my mind and the mind of others. So hit up Pat Psychology Masters YouTube channel, subscribe, give it a like and a comment and a share. All that kind of stuff helps and I'll chat you soon.